Yeah, I know. I just gotta find the master. Oh, damn. These things never work. No. Ah! Okay. Yeah, fine. I just gotta find it. Here it is. Well, this is it. This is it? Yep, this is it. Well, uh... Wow! <laughs> yeah, it's a barn. No, I'm, yeah, it's really a barn. Yep, the cows walked out, the actors walked in. When? Well, not, not recently. Over one, two... Well, a lot of years ago. Um, in the dressing rooms, when it rains, two centuries worth of cow, uh, flop. <laughs> we renovated it in 48. That's when our theater started. <laughs> renovated it? Where? Well, the stage. We, we put in the stage. Is this like a snipe hunt? Oh, okay. Where's the theater? This is a scene shop, right? Well, we do build the scenery here, but... Well, this is the theater. Um, what's the season? Oh, uh, Dracula. Oh, which one? The, uh, Alderson and... New adaptation. Very faithful to the original novel. Whose? My own. Dracul. <laughs> Prince of the Undead. <laughs> no one runs this. I agree. Me too. It's, uh, well, not quite, uh, well, Charlie's aunt. Wait, well, Lear. Lear? <laughs> here? Yes, Howl, Howl, Howl. Who's playing here? Uh, I am. Uh, who's directing? Uh, me. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, well, it's my time to tackle that son of a gun and, uh, well, what the heck. Yeah, what the heck. So, uh, what do you think? I know it's a bit rustic. Rustic may be a bit of an understatement. But it really has charm. Well, it has loads of charm when it's cleaned up, and, well, I'd like you to be a part of it. Um, uh, well, great. Um, Charlie Zan. Yeah! You ever done it before? Uh, well, it's a very funny play. One of the great farces. Four times. I wore the dress once. Uh, are you directing that too? No. Susanna Huntsman. You know her? She's very sharp, and, and right out of Yale, and... Well, it's her first professional gig, but she has some extraordinary ideas. About Charlie's aunt? She did this thesis project on Noel Coward in the Yale swimming pool. Puppets, gender switching, and synchronized. It was all very esoteric. You saw this? Barbara wrote to me about it. Barbara? Well, Barbara DeMartino. She's our annual sponsor. Without her donations, the playoffs couldn't make it. She's very big on encouraging young directors, and particularly young female directors, and particularly young female directors who are the daughters of her college roommate at Vassar. And, well, she lives in Palm Beach in the winter. Yeah? Barbara. Oh. So, Charlie Zan, you know, to be frank, and well, I'm not putting you on or anything, but I think, I think you can wear, wear the dress. Really? Well. Well, yeah, would you want to? Well, I mean, it's one of the funniest parts of Some guys, particularly straight guys, I mean, they're kind of nervous about the whole, uh... Well, you aren't, are you? Last I checked. Well, that's good. I'm, well, I mean, it'd be fine if you were. I, I am. Oh, you are? No, no, I'm, I'm not. Oh, well, that's good. I didn't mean that's good that you're not... Well, what I... Um... So, the dress. I, it's one of the funniest parts I've ever written. I'd love to play it sometime. Well, well that's great. So, uh, we're done then. I, uh, I would love to, but I don't know whether I should really leave town by, right now. My agent would have me to, I'm sure. I'm just starting to get sent off a call back. So, my first refusal last week. And I actually had my call from Days of Our Lives. Oh, good. And it's the pilot season, so you never know what might happen. Oh, I know. And it's four months away. Hey, uh, listen, you'll think about it. Well, thanks for coming out and auditioning anyways. Sure, thank you for the offer. We'll just have to see. Yeah. 
Shall we go back to the farmhouse? Yeah, it is really cool. Well, it's February, and uh, I'll get the ghost like this time so we don't, you know, kill ourselves. I know what it looks like now, but well, come summer, July, a beautiful New England evening, the sun setting, back of our mountain, Mr. Wilder says. And, well, and sometimes the, the sunset slants across the roof and, and through the sugar maples and well, hits those big barn doors with lighting effect you can only dream about recreating on stage. And well, at other times, the, the evening light is so clear that everything just stands out like an impressionist painting. Well, and then a couple hundred people come here, sit in the dark on, on uncomfortable chairs in a 200-year-old theater with no air conditioning, and, and watch us act out stories. Why? Well, it's a complete mystery to me. A miracle of sorts. Who could not want to be a part of that? Fools! You bit 
pitiful fools, you shall tear each your eyes out yet and fear in horror of me, Dracul, prince of the undead. You think you have left me without a place of rest? But I have one last box. Search as you will, but you shall never find me. I shall sleep in my earth box for a century. My revenge has just begun. Hear my prophecy. Ah, ah, ah. Wow, Tyler, that was terrific. Tell me, have you done this before? Last winter at the Art Factory Dinner Playhouse, Creeks, I want to tell you. This text, yours. <laughs> I'm trying to do the novel justice. That's what I like to do. Do Dracula. Vlad the Justice. Boy, would that be refreshing. Is there a, is there a second act? Well, it's, uh, coming along. Uh... Well, if it's anything like this, you are a home free man. Last one at the Art Factory was also... Also, surface, taping, and smoking teeth and prime rib. I hate all those cheap tricks. I want to find my inner vlog being failed. Well, Tyler, let me tell you, your inner, uh, I mean, that, uh, I mean, what you, uh, well, it really spoke to me. And, uh, well, you'd want to come back after last year with Pierre Gint and the flying pig and everything. And I love it up there, man. That barn. You know, once you live flat, I will live him up for you if, uh, if you can live up the undead, if you know what I mean. <laughs> well, Tyler, that's absolutely terrific. Thanks for coming out. Oh, and Tyler, one more thing. Um, do you still have the cake and the teeth? Of course. <laughs> This is the Playhouse Edition. Yes, yes it is. I'm Gordon Page, the Artistic Director. This is Susanna Huntsman, my de guest director. Um, did you happen to have a picture in resume? My agent didn't send one over. Uh, doesn't look like it. <sighs> Can't believe it. I don't think I've got one here. I don't use them much anymore. Uh, really? Most people in the business know me. 30 years, and I guess you still need a picture and a resume. Well, it's just a formality, really. Who's playing clear? Me. Of course. Well, hey, it's my time to tackle that son of a god. I did it with Joe in the park. Back in the early days, before he started screwing around with movie stars. Have we met before? Well, we, we may have. I'm I don't think we have. Tell me about your theme. Well, we're an old... Old some theater. Uh, it's a barn. I did that, sir. Get him bumped for a gun put. Lakes region, the cake. Uh, when they did plays, before it was all nonsense, vibe and the laughing, with a bunch of Beijing had a lesson from Brady Punch. <sighs> well, we do plays, no musicals. That's exactly why I'm here. I'll do Gloucester for you, find the sea, or whatever you want in that stupid farce. You can take that load off your mind. Well, actually, we already have a Gloucester, Richfield Hawksley, but would you mind reading for Cornwall? Ha! <laughs> Cornwall! Well, the light in here is pretty bad. Oh, well, you could always do a monologue from memory. A monologue. A memorized speech. Like, in school! Well, like... <laughs> like... Now is the winter of our discontent. Or, this is the most important part with Grover's Corner. Call the agent, tell them to set it up. But my time is kind of short today. Very nice meeting. What's his name? <clears throat> Hello? Yes, Barbara? It, Mrs. DeMartino, yes, it, it's Gordon, Gordon Page. Uh, from the Playhouse, yes. Uh, mm-hmm. 
Oh, uh, Pierre Gint, it was called. Oh, uh, well, well, those were trolls. Uh, oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, well, we, we won't be doing Pierre Gint again, uh, or anything by Ibsen again, or, or anything like it was, it was by Ibsen again. You have my guarantee on that. Yes, uh, this year, well, we're doing, uh, well, no, we're, we're not doing Sound of Music. Uh, I don't think we could fit the Alps in the barn. No, those were, those are fjords and Pier Gint, not mountains. No, fjords. Fjords? Fjords. Fjords, Barbara. Fiji is in the South Pacific. <laughs> yes, I, I did see that one. It, it's a good one. Bali hop to you, too. Um, listen, that's, that's kind of the reason why I'm, I'm calling you, actually. I, um, well, I'm here to ask you about your, your annual, very, very generous donation, and well... Oh, well, this year we're doing King Lear, and... Well, it's, it, it's really not that depressing. Ultimately, it's very uplifting. Lots of uplift and leer. Any Shakespeare other than King Lear? Yes, I, I suppose it's never too late to change. Yes, I, under, I understand. Thank you. Well, uh, Barbara, we, we really appreciate it. <coughs> Hello? <laughs> Barbara? Mrs. DeMart now. Hello? Daisy, what are you doing here? Certainly not to audition, I hope. Good God, I hope not. We stopped for coffee. Thought we'd drop by. Drop by since you were in town. How's my wonderful bar, my Temple among the elms, under its wintry blanket? Well, it's May. Richfield Hawksley. Oh, uh, sorry. Uh, Richfield, Susanna Huntsman. Susanna, Daisy Coates. Richfield and Daisy have been with us since, uh, well, forever, and, uh, well, Suzanne is directing Charlie's Aunt. How wonderful! Yeah, it seems she's never really been on stage before. Really? Well, I don't think acting has anything to do with directing. <laughs> really? I did Charlie's Aunt at the Playhouse in 68, and uh, again in, uh, well, whenever. Uh, when this lad put on the dress. <laughs> what dress? What, what dress? Good. <laughs> 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 what dress, yes. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> tell, me what, tell me what year you were born, and I'll tell you what plays we're doing that wonderful barn on the sugar maples. What plays you do doesn't matter. It's what you do to them. Well, not, uh... Exactly. Uh, Madame Usman Sky used to say to me when I was even younger than you are, she used to say, uh... Well, what does Madame Usman say? Gordon, I want you to know I've learned it. Letter perfect, I've learned it. He's been working on it all year. A whole year, by God, but I've learned it. As flies to wanton boys are we to the gods, they kill us for their sports. Oh, right. King Lear, uh, you're of Gloucester, blind, you know, uh, by this point. Richfield, Daisy, um, there's been a slight adjustment to the schedule, and, well, we're doing Hamlet. We're not doing Lear anymore? It's Hamlet now? Yes, well, Barbara thought that Lear was a bit too depressing, and, and besides, it, I've always wanted to be Hamlet, and. We have this amazing Ophelia. You already got your Ophelia? Well, uh, uh, Daisy, well, uh, for you, I had in mind Gertrude. What? <sighs> what a rogue and peasant slave I am. Am I? What? Yes. Am I? <laughs> oh, crap. <laughs> Let's see, what's next? Cocktails? Well, uh, no, not, uh, not yet. Uh, let's see, Craig. Craig, it's, it's up to you now. Uh, well, Craig is our, uh, what's your title now? Craig, you've taken on so much. Producing executive 
administrative director. Right, so bathroom, budgets, and books. Does that sound about right? <laughs> well, everyone be nice to Craig. Uh, Craig's the one that writes our checks. <laughs> but, uh, but I sign them, of course. <laughs> Very humorous, Gordon, per usual. Well, I don't have to tell you how happy I am you're all here. I stay up all here, I stay up here all winter while Gordon does artistic things in lofts and basements around New York. And it's been a long winter. It's always a long winter. My job is to keep all you people Organized. So, if you'll just follow a few simple rules and these guidelines, we should get through this summer fine. Is is that it? Oh. Okay. Well. Uh... I do want to add one thought on the subject of office supplies. Now, I work in an office, so I have office supplies. Most of you don't work in an office. You work in rehearsals or someplace, so you don't have office supplies. Now, I understand that. If you had an office, you would have office supplies, but you don't. However, Simply because you don't have an office and therefore don't have office supplies, this doesn't mean that my office supplies are therefore your office supplies. Even though they are the Playhouse office supplies, supplied by the Playhouse I mean, and you are employed by the Playhouse, and therefore might assume you have a right to those office supplies, you don't. Not my office supplies. I mean, I am a person. So, I have pencils. You are people too, so you should have pencils. But, you don't. I, I do, I just don't know why you don't. I have pencils, I take care of my pencils, I sharpen my pencils. But you don't. You never seem to sharpen my pencils, especially you, Sarah. Why? I don't know. Probably because you don't have them. So why don't I ever have any pencils? Well, when Henry comes in with a receipt for ten yards of fabric for, for fjords, and I want to write that down in my account book, I can't be looking over for a pencil, can I? I ask you, can I? <sighs> so, I hope we are all clear on the subject of office supplies. I'm sure we'll all have a wonderful and fulfilling summer here at the Playhouse. And if you need anything... Except pencils. <laughs> Stop it to my office of the wish. Craig, I have a question. What is the correct procedure, the proper protocol, as it were, to get our money back if the Coke machine just eats it and we don't get a Coke? What the heck is that about? The Coke machine! Gordon, I am not responsible! This season what? I'm not having anything to what? do with the Coca-Cola bottling bo bo company of North New England or any of their products. That machine is an abomination. It is a nightmare. It is my cross to fix. Don't do it. Don't do it. Oh, I am glad that you find this funny, Sarah. I blame you because I most certainly do not. All right. All right. That's enough about the the office supplies and the uh, pencils and the Coca-Cola products. And well, uh, I think we're going to have a Terrific, a wonderful, a great summer. And uh, one word of advice to you all, speak the speech. Oh, uh, before I forget, Barbara sends her best to you all from her lovely home down in Palm Beach. Especially you, Susanna. <coughs> so, uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> speak the speech. Oh, uh, another thing. I'd like to introduce our hard-working apprentices for this season, Carmen Ian and Brown. Wrong. What? Wrong. Brown. Wrong. 
right. Uh, <laughs> speak the speech as I pronounce it to you, tripping the tongue suit the action to the word, and the, the, the word to the action. It's all as if it were a, a mirror up to nature. Dear God. Now there's beer and wine on the proxy. And, and soda too, Sarah. There's soda. So um, let's get to know one another and find out what a piece of work is man. Is he always like that? What? It's just me quoting everything. Just being I've at only met him once. Seems sincere. <laughs> sincere. Yes, I suppose you could call him that. Gordon, this that blue prints would be on that opus you just handed to your longtime designer, friend, and colleague for the very first time tonight on the eve of the first rehearsal. Henry, just give it a chance. I think that you'll see. Oh, I see already, Gordon. I see 20 sets, flying vampire bats, exploded crosses, chemical fog, wireless microphones, not to mention Charlie's Ogden Hamlet, rotating rep, on a stage, the sun shakes from the walk in closet. Henry, think theatrical and spare. Think theatrically spare. Think fabric draped artistically here and there. I'm thinking disaster. I'm thinking expensive. Well, I'm thinking fabric draped artistically and economically both here and there. And what about the budget this year? You didn't tell me. Tell me what? It's a little less. Less? Fifteen percent cut. Gordon! Hey. Henry, you know last year was tough. Here again, just didn't sell. And if we don't at least break even this year, we're in real trouble. You know, I could have that job tomorrow if I wanted in the window dressing department that please. <laughs> Henry, just think. One night, Drek. The next, Charlie's aunt. And Hamlet in between for the matinee. I mean, well, what a treat. For who? Mary? <coughs> Tyler Taylor wanted to say, hey, so you'll be my, uh, Mina, huh? Right. You're Dracula? Are you going to have, like, the teeth and everything? Everything. Oh, wow. But it's the inner Vlad that really interests me, Mary. Wow. Because the question is, what does it mean to be truly undead? I think she really offers herself to him. I really do like <laughs> as a sacrifice. That's really insightful. Do you want some more wine? Gordon, Richfield, <clears throat> um, I'll your script for Dracula. Ah uh ah, -uh. <laughs> Rinse of the undead. Uh -uh -uh. Yes, of course, uh, Dracul. Ah, uh, I think it's marvelous what you've done. Thank you. You know, I've done Van Helsing five times. But yeah, that's why I cast you for the role. Should come back to you pretty quickly. Well, see, that's just the thing. Uh, in the original version, there were two ingenues, uh, Lucy Westerra and Mina Murray, and. Well, you've only got Mina. Well, economy, both artistic and financial. Ah, yes, uh, of course. Um, but also in the other version, there are three young men. Uh, Arthur Holmwood, Jonathan Harker, and Jack Seward. But you've got Seward as Mina's father, so now she's Mina Seward, and Harker's her fiancé, and... Well, I'm just having a terrible time with the names. You'll do wonderful. You always do it. And you've done it five times. He's a gay, right? Good welcome, Morgan. Craig was in fine form. Yeah, same old, uh, what's that? A gin and tonic, a refreshing summer drink. Sarah. And I don't want to hear about it. Sarah. <laughs> Do you really hate this place? It's, uh, rustic, I guess. <laughs> rustic! Meg Price and Tom Hanks meet the dog dynasty. <laughs> Yes, I uh, started here with Usman Scott. She was a uh, like the Stan Foster, you know, the Moscow artist. Art theater. I tried these boards with Kit Cornell, Helen Hayes, Liv Fontaine. So, like, have there ever been any stars here? I'll warn you up front. I don't do shtick. Good. This farce crap doesn't interest me. <laughs> I don't think Charlie Zed is a farce. <laughs> what did she just say? This could be more interesting than I thought. Gordon Wilder was here, you know. I didn't have it with Thorin on that stage right there with uh, Thorin Wilder as a stage manager. Is this how we hear the summer? So, Mary, I want to ask you about this epic of Gilgamesh you were in. I did my own all-female adaptation for my senior thesis. Is there Excuse me. Of... I was just getting here some more wine. <laughs> See, the thing about Vlad Mary is always remember that he is the impaler. 
Jack, I, um, quite pleased, actually, and surprised that you managed to make it out for the season. Well, to uh, tell you the truth, it, uh, seemed like a good place to spend the summer. You'll do great. I know you will. And you'll be absolutely hysterical in Charlie's hand. I just heard Susanna say something about that. So I told them at the clinic that they could take Betty and her Ford and put it where the sun don't shine because that's I gotta go, Jack. I'll see you later. <laughs> okay, tell me the truth. Why are you here? It seemed like a nice place to spend the summer. I know truth will act when I see it, and that wasn't. Well, yeah, I wasn't going to accept the offer. When I went back to New York, without, for the whole winter spring, out of work, without hardly an audition, this whole acting thing just seemed so pointless, you know? So all of a sudden, when I applied to Columbia Law School, to my amazement, they accepted me. I start September, but I still have this offer for the summer. So. Leaving the business. I the pranks 30 years ago. Maybe we'll have some fun with summer. Fun? Sure. 55 years old, 30 years in the business, and I'm looking for some fun here in the mosquito capital of New England. Some change. Or he needs to put in some eye drops. 
Eye drops? He's from England, Jack. He would have used it the pollen in Transylvania, now would he? I'd like to sell me Frankenstein. Montini Jr. turning into Wolfman. It's Gordon's favorite. Tyler, I think you've hit a home run with that one. He uses a gesture, and he plays it like he had a, uh, like he had an aneurysm, or, or really minor stroke or something. He grabs his skull. I don't squash you to grab my skull. Gordon, what do you think? Well, I think, Tyler, that, well, it's, it's really creative, Tyler, obviously. And, uh, well, I think if we had the time and the money to really explore it, we, we would, but, but, but. One of our goals here at the Playhouse is to rehearse slightly beyond the first scene. So the answer is no, Tyler. Okay, so, lights up. I know. Maybe Harker was a zoology major in college and really fascinated by bats, so he decided. No. Lights. Welcome to my house, Mr. Harker, and I'm freely in your own will. Count Dracula? I am Dracula, and I bid you welcome to my house. Come freely, go safely, and give some of the happiness to break. Wolf Howl. Act with me, Sarah. Become the wolf. Ah, woo! Ah, listen, the children of the night, what music they make! I'm sorry, can I stop? Uh, sure. Anytime. There's just a lot of issues when you're playing the undead, you know? Yeah. Where's the house? <laughs> uh, behind you, kind of, uh, up center -ish. Does that work for you? So, the front door is behind me? Well, it could be below you. No, I want to be in the door. Holding the door so the first thing you saw were my claw-like fingers slowly wrapping around the door. I just got chills. Are you in this scene? <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe when you say, welcome, welcome to my house. No, I want it to be the first thing they see. I want it to be my significant psychological gesture for the role. Well, Tyler, I think... Right now we need, we need to move on to, to advance with the plot first. Well, Gordon, there isn't really a door. Well, Tyler, there isn't really a door. I thought you said it was behind me. Well, the house is behind you. The front door isn't part of the house. Well, it would be, wouldn't it? But it isn't real. But it isn't real. The front door isn't real? No, Tyler. The well, front door isn't real. How do I welcome to my house, Mr. Harker, without a front door? Well, I mean, Tyler, it's, it, it's an open environment, a space, a unit, a concept. Maybe someone, anyone, could have told me that in New York before I signed the contract, but here I am in New Hampshire, so you just tell me. You just tell me, Gordon, how do I welcome to my house, Mr. Harker, without a front door? You could use some of the acting you saved by not morphing. Well, Tyler, it's just... It's just that Henry didn't design a real door for the set. Oh, I see. The set is going to tell me how to play this role. The stage designer is going to tell me the only one actually up here. Except for me and my eye drop. Actually up here, tearing his guts out in front of 200 people. The set will tell me how to play this role. Well, I suppose we could always drape some fabric in the shape of a door and then... Oh, Henry! Tyler, there is no door. There will not be a door unless you pick one up and morph it on with you. <laughs> I can do that. <laughs> Is that 
this really true? It's really true. This isn't really true. This is really creepy. Oh, do we really have to use it? It's in her will. Not only is this really creepy, it's gross. Oh. The lawyer sent it over. Paragraph 7a, my skull is to be preserved and shall be used to portray the skull of York if and when the playhouse shall present the play Hamlet by William Shakespeare. Paragraph 7b, the above stated codicil shall be considered a condition of my bequest of the property to the Playhouse Corporation. Our founder, Ethel Barnstein, put it in her will. We are supposed to use her skull for that of York. Creepy, gross, and sick. Yeah, there's got to be some way out of this. Not unless we want to give the property back. I think it's pretty cool. <laughs> I guess she really wanted to be in Hamlet. Or wanted to make sure no one ever did Hamlet at her theater. You <clears throat> read it from Richfield. He's the grave digger. Oh, I am not going to be the one who tells Richfield. He and Daisy were the only ones who actually knew her. No, no, no. You tell him. I don't want to tell him. Uh, this is a technical issue, and so you tell me, Sarah. Oh, this is... This is a prop. That's your department, Henry. You take her. Cool. <laughs> Sir. Oh, look out, there's Terry. Uh, what's up with All right, this is the uh, teen hat bit, right? Right. So, uh, how do we, uh, where's Susanna? Where's our director? She said she finds CG rehearsals boring. She just wants you guys to kind of figure it out, and then she'll fix it. You're kidding me, right? I wish. Well, the gag, as I recall, is really rather simple, but uh, very effective. The audience loves this thing. So, as you all know, uh, Lord Fancourt here, Fanny, uh, puts on the dress and pretends to be Charlie's aunt so that when Charlie's real aunt fails to arrive, Charlie and Jack can have a chaperone for their date. Now, when the real aunt does arrive, no one knows it's her, so Fanny continues to masquerade by pouring tea. Tyler here, playing Jack, you hold the cups, and Fanny, you pour. Now, at the moment he moves the cups away from where they're supposed to be, the tea goes in the hat. Now, you keep your attention elsewhere until you pour the tea in the hat three times. You see it and react. Oh! <laughs> Jack, you see it and you react. Oh! I see it and I react. Oh! 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 Enormous laugh. Roars in fact. Oh, we do this in rhythm but with the lines. Right, good instincts. And I'll hold out the first two cups after. Do we all take two? I pour the first two cups for real to set up again. And I'll hand to you Mary. I passed to Amy. I mean in real life for my I wish I had your name and then to Ian. I mean in real estate like Charlie like to play Charlie's aunt. Oh, uh, I keep boring, but the cups aren't there. T and Hat. And this is supposed to be funny. That's farce. I hate farce. So, shall we give it a shot? No books? I'm gonna see your pants. Hey. Run it up and see who salutes it. I love stock. This is rep. Rep? Yup. Okay, uh, how do you do? I'm Charlie Sand from Brazil. Where the nuts come from? Oh, look who's here. Susanna. Do you have something to show me yet? I believe we do. Shall we show you the TV? By all means, show me the TV. Uh, has anyone seen Henry Rand? I gotta give him something. Oh, uh, am I in time to see something? Yes, uh, places for the TV. And how do you do? I'm Charlie's aunt. How do you do? I'm Charlie's aunt. Where the come from? How do you do? Do you know I'm most interested in meeting you? Rue, I knew your late husband. Intimately. Oh, my late husband. How are we all getting on? Everything's all right, isn't it? Well, no, she really tossed him. The deuce! Tea is served. Look out, there's tea. What happens? You must entertain. Now, Donna Lucia, will you pour out tea? Sir. May I help Donna Lucia? What a cruel interruption. 
You were getting on so nicely. Do we all take tea? <laughs> you haven't been in England long, have you? Change the subject. Oh, change the subject. <laughs> Do you take sugar and cream? Do you take sugar and cream? <laughs> ask them if they take sugar and cream. I ask them if they take sugar and cream. <laughs> I think I should like a little sugar and cream gone on this year. No, 
know, I, I did it to Whoa! My orangutan is not bisexual, okay? I mean, I don't care about your orangutans, but my orangutan is completely heterosexual, okay? Okay. <laughs> and it's dusk at the waterfall. What am I? What do you think you are? The butler. <laughs> a wildebeest. Be a wildebeest. I don't know how to be a wildebeest. And that is exactly why we need to improvise the scene. Brett. I'm sorry. And it's dusk at the waterfall. Excuse me. <sighs> yes. Do you want, like, gazelle sounds? <laughs> of course. What do gazelles sound like? <laughs> they whinny. Whinny? <laughs> <laughs> and it's dusk at the waterhole, the sun sets warily over the dry, hot African plain. Two nimble gazelles approaching ever shrinking communal ponds. Good. 
I've got to get... Sarah will assign each actor one and only one pencil. She'll write their name on it at the time the pencil is to be issued, perhaps on a small piece of tape. Initials would do, I suppose. When said pencil has been reduced by use to under two and three-eighths inches in length, the size of which becomes difficult for the normal size hand to grip effectively, the actor will return the pencil to the stage management and be issued a new pencil. Wow, great. Uh, I gotta I'm get... not done. Okay. I will recycle these two and three-eighths inch pencils for use in my own office. I have a smallish hand and am willing to forgo fresh pencils for the sake of the institution. <laughs> they may also be used in the uh, scenery shop for marking boards for the cutting process by um, saws, thereby eliminating entirely the budget we needed for new pencils in two separate areas of the operation. Wow, great. That's fantastic. And, and uh, yeah, I got to get some rehearsal. Gordon, that other matter. We still haven't received Mrs. DeMartineau's check yet. <laughs> That's impossible. I called her months ago. You have to call her again. Oh. Cash flow. Cash flow. It's not flowing. Hey. Good Dracula or Hamlet or Charlie's Sand? I get so confused. <laughs> Dracula. Ah, Dracula, yes. So you must be our beautiful Miss Lucy. Beyonce is a good Mr. Homewood, daughter to the county Mrs. Lucinda. No. Mina, Beyonce and Mr. Harker, daughter to the kind of Dr. Seward. Oh, dear Mina, so on. Wanna run for our first scene? What scene? I don't have any lines in the only real scene we have together. I kind of just lie there while you talk some about how I'm flesh of your flesh, blood of your blood, and when my brain says, come to me, you'll come, I'll come to you for like all the time, and then you suck on my neck. Yeah. You want to rehearse? You are so diligent. You always want to rehearse that scene. Well, Mary, that's what being a professional is all about. Now, why don't you lie on this bed? And that then. This. You know, I've been meaning to ask you something. <laughs> I mean, I think you're really good how you can talk with those teeth and an accent all at the same time, but. But, how come you're not on Broadway or something? Ha! <laughs> you want to know why he's not on Broadway? Well, I'll tell you why he's not on Broadway. Vernon. <laughs> Now, there are 20,000 actors in the New York metropolitan area, and the 200 are working in Broadway right now. And the vast majority of those have vocal cords of titanium alloy, genetically engineered to break the glass of the chandelier eight times a week. Now, there's one non-musical currently playing, and that is an import from London would sit, count six American understudies. Now, since it is apparent that without a stroke of luck approaching the supernatural, neither Tyler Taylor, or Vernon Volker for that matter, will be morphing into Broadway actors anytime soon, what's left? Well, he can stay in New York, work in one of our prestigious off-Broadway themes, dedicated to the ideals of high art and low pay for three to four hundred dollars a week. That's if he's lucky and good, and has an agent who's sleeping with the casting director who has a brother-in-law who's married to the producer. <laughs> so, what else is there? Well, if he doesn't mind leaving his wife, his children, his cat... I'm not married. <laughs> okay! His bar store at the West Bank Cafe for six, seven, eight, even eight hundred dollars a week. He can live out of a suitcase in St. Louis. 
Salt Lake, Cincinnati, and Sioux City. Or, God forbid, spend the summer in an unair conditioned barn in New Hampshire. Like your example, the players, the Auschwitz of summer theater. <laughs> or, stay in New York, keep a straight job as bartender, waiter, or word processor. Make triple the money and have a life. But then, we wouldn't be acting, would we? had not fixed his cannon against self-slaughter. O oh God, God, how weary, stale, flat, and unprofitable seem, unprofitable, 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 <laughs> un, uh, unprofitable seem to me all the uses of this world. I just thought I'd catch up on a little rehearsal. Everyone knows I need it. I was wondering. You rehearse everybody else and just jump over your parts. Well, I want to get the whole thing up on its feet. And besides, I'm just too old for this part. I mean, I look at Jack, who is the right age, or, or Tyler even, and I just think... So you're too old. Barrymore played it at your age. Sarah Bernhardt played it at 60-something. Not only was she too old, she had a wooden leg. And she was the wrong sex. Oops. Excuse me. Non-traditionally gendered. Otherly gendered? Whatever. Susanna would have loved it. By the way, we need to discuss that little costume issue that came up the other day. Uh, what? What? You sounded pretty good just now. No, I did it. Okay, you didn't. Have you heard about Jack? I'm leaving the business in the fall and going to, to law school. Yeah? Well, well, it just, it ticks me off, that's all. Why should it tick you off? Well, I, I, I hired him. I, I brought him into this company. And he's doing the job you hired him for. And doing it well. I know, I know, it just, well, I mean, it disturbs me, that's all. Oh, it doesn't tick you off anymore? It disturbs you? Why is it? Why is it that that should disturb me? Because when somebody like Jack leaves the business, somebody with real promise for the big career none of the rest of us ever had or ever had the chance to have, when somebody like that leaves, it disturbs those of us who remain because calls into question all the decisions we made along the way, or never really made, but just let happen. It calls into question our lives. It doesn't have anything to do with Jack. It has to do with us. You're too smart for your own good sometimes, you know that? Do you know that? Makes a very good excuse for drinking. Uh, is that a... A lot of tonic and ice. Do you uh, think you should? You used to like it when we drank together. We had fun! Yeah, when we drank together, and then you started drinking by yourself, and then even, even when we were drinking, drinking together, together, you. Are you okay? Sure. Taking it one drink at a time. 
How does it feel to be back? Feels like just another playhouse summer. Mosquitoes the size of sparrows, hot and humid enough to make your eyeballs sweat. Actors being actors. Where did you find Vernon, by the way? The talent agency for the terminally embittered? Henry's being Henry. Craig is being Craig. And Gordon Page is being Gordon Page. You have got to spend some time in Charlie's Air rehearsals, Gordon. We're out of control. Yeah. I... Just another playhouse summer. It's good to be home. Thank you. You're welcome. Did the new ones know? I'm sure Tyler, Daisy, and Richfield have filled them in by now. I'm sure they have. The only thing thicker than the mosquitoes around this place is the gossip. Do the speech again. I promise I won't interrupt. And don't worry about the scansion. Just be simple and quiet. The way you used to be when we were 25 and you were burning to play this part. And you would read it to me in bed before we turned out the light. I have a blade, but wherefore I know not, lost all my mirth. And indeed, it it goes so heavily with my disposition that this, this goodly frame the earth seems to me a sterile promontory. This excellent canopy, the air, look you, this brave overhanging firmament, this majestic roof fretted with golden fire, why, why it appears no other thing to me than a foul pestilent congregation of vapors. What a piece of work is man. How noble in reason, how infinite in faculties, in form and moving, how expressed and admirable, in action how like an angel, in apprehension how like a god. And yet, to me, what is this quintessence of dust? Don't break my heart. For I must hold my tongue. look like a man and the other half like a woman. <laughs> well, well, he is a man. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's, it's not really my job to check that sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I see. Well, well, next. Well, it's, uh, Dracul. <coughs> uh, Dracul. Prince of the Undead. <clears throat> well, we we haven't really been rehearsing the sound of music, and um, <coughs> yes, I yes I see. Uh, oh yes. Oh yes, you have, a, Mr. Martin. You have an absolutely lovely singing voice. Um, you see this? What well, kind of brings me to the reason? Uh, why I'm calling, you see, uh, well, a few months ago, I called you about your uh, incredibly annual, uh, generous annual donation, and well, 
Well, we haven't really received it, and, 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 and you see the, um, well, the cash flow isn't flowing! Well, yes, Mrs. Martin, the cash flow isn't flowing, and, uh, well, and, well, um, oh, no, no, I, I don't think I, I could, I, I don't think I know all the words, in fact, I'm, I'm absolutely, I'm absolutely positive I, I don't know any of the words. It, Of course. <clears throat> Doe, a deer, a female deer, the red, a drop of golden sun. What the hell is Lord doing now? Speaking with our largest single contributor. Mrs. DeMartin. Yes. Does she want her granddaughter to be an apprentice again? Oh, I don't think so. Not after last season. Wasn't she one of the village girls in Pierre Gint? The one who... The one who cried all the time because she thought she was pregnant by the Troll King. <laughs> I didn't know that. It was hysterical. So that's why she was always upset? Wouldn't you be if you thought you were pregnant by the Troll King? <laughs> and you thought it was hysterical. Yeah, the pregnancy was hysterical. Imagine. Oh, thank God. What? Tyler? Don't look at me! I didn't play the Troll King. I was Pierre Gint. <coughs> What do you mean? Oh no, it wasn't the Troll King, it was you! Oh. What does she mean, Tyler? Nothing, nothing. Alright, she's sending it around later today. My god, Tyler, what was she? 16? 18? Baby? She was 22! What? Do you check their driver's licenses? Of course! Uh, <laughs> what exactly are we talking about? Nothing! Not nothing. <laughs> Henry, how are we? How's the set? Come on, Henry, you say that every year, and every year you always pull through. Gordon, the special effects in Dracula alone. Uh -uh. Dracula. <laughs> Prince of the Undead. Ha uh, uh, uh. ha ha. Dracula, <laughs> are too much for a theater with ten times our budget. Come on, Henry, stop being so down. I mean, I mean. Flying pigs. Exploding crosses, a sound cue, every 30 seconds, and God knows how many light cues. Well, I mean, well, Pierre Gint had a lot of effects. Yes, and Barbara DeMartino's granddaughter dropped Pierre right, dropped the flying pig, and Pierre right on the troll pig. Yeah, well, that was an accident, okay? My point is, it's going to be these apprentices running the special effects for you all over again. Karma, Ian, and Ron. Yeah, and... They're great kids. Good! These great kids have been taking Jack Hall during the day, running Charlie's gender conflicted on in the evening, and staying up after the show until 6 o'clock in the morning to build Hamlet. Well, <laughs> Henry, please, they, they do so many, so many good things, and, and, and you're the one who gives them the inspiration to do the amazing things that they do. How appropriately phrased. Hey guys, loyal apprentice, disciples of the craft of Dionysus, turn the ladder sideways. Uh, Fran. Wrong. Yeah, right. What do you know? I bring the tea on when I hear the barking dogs. That's all I know. I believe my point has been made. <laughs> Joe, a deer, a female deer, rape, a drop of golden sun, me, a name Sarah. I call myself. Um, well, Henry is a bit worried about the effects of Dracul. A bit worried? And I was wondering what you thought. So you must be our beautiful Miss Lucy, fiancé to good Mr. Homewood, daughter to the county Mr. Vista. No, fiancé of Harker. No, beautiful Miss Mina. Mina, 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 Mina! I gotta go. Good luck. I rest my case. Come on, Henry. You're such a... You're such a pessimist. I mean, Charlie's Anne... It looked great. By the end of the show's opening, there was more paint on the actors than there was on the set. Yeah, I mean... It, 
I mean, the audience loves that kind of thing. I mean, it's, it's all live theater, you know? Well, if they like Charlie's art, they're going to love Dracul, Prince of the Undead. <laughs> Strange storm. 
has been experienced here. It was centered around a foreign vessel that then strangely appeared in the harbor. There was not a living soul aboard, only the body. One poor seaman whose throat. <laughs> whose throat had been strangely torn open, as if by some animal. <clears throat> and, strange, a large wolf-like dog was seen leaping away from the vessel. The strange schooner had only a small cargo, a number of large wooden stray boxes filled Eleventh August. Jonathan, my fiance, has returned from Transylvania. But so changed. He will not speak of the events that occurred. My, my. The fog is thick tonight. I am so tired. So, so tired. <laughs> <laughs> Come, come to me, my love. I am eternity. I am life. I am lost. Love, life, love, life. has been extremely tired and weak recently. What the heck is going on with the fog? Turn off your ah, Yes! Shh! It is strange, these voices in the night. <laughs> I have written to my old friend and professor, Abraham Van Helsing. Not only is he a medical doctor, but a philosopher, a metaphysician, an expert on strange <laughs> diseases. So, you must be our beautiful Miss Lucy. Fiance is a good Mr. Homewood. Daughter is a kindly Mrs. Bestender. No! <laughs> Mina! Fiance of Mr. Harper. Daughter to the kindly Dr. Seward. Ah, yes, of course. Uh, whatever your name is. Ah, uh, I have so great pleasure to meet you because you're so beloved. Say, tell me you are a trifle pale. I'm fine, Dr. Van Helsing. Absolutely fine. Yes, so now, Miss Mina, forgive me, I wish to feel a uh, glance in your throat. Gotten him up! Doctor, it's not even wrong. Nothing, nothing, my young friends. Miss Lou, uh, Mina, uh, you have two small puncture wounds on your throat. Here, do you know where you got them? I don't know, Dr. Van Helsing. I don't know. Leave me alone. Oh, Miss Lucy. Oh, Mina. I got Mina. <laughs> Jonathan, don't go away. Hold me. People, uh, <laughs> uh, step into the next room, yeah? <sighs> there can be no doubt. No doubt. What, Professor? Have you ever heard of the vampire? <laughs> Vampire? In England? Vampire? In the 19th century? Yes, the vampire. In England? In the 19th century? Now, I have a letter here from my good friend Professor Zani of Budapest. This letter will tell us everything we need to know about this vampire. I have the letter here. No, it must be here. Uh, I s seem to have forgotten my good friend Professor Tony's letter. Ah, uh, uh, perhaps you can remember its content. Huh? Yes, Professor, perhaps you can uh, remember what that said. Ah, uh, no, I don't think I can remember my good friend Professor Tony's letter. <coughs> perhaps 
Do you suppose, uh, Professor, this vampire could possibly be Vlad Dracul of Transylvania? The one who won his name by fighting with the Turks. Ah, yes, uh, correct. He fought the Turks in the 15th century. He is also called Vlad Sepech. Ah, which translates to, uh, which translates to, uh, uh, help. I know it. Translates to Vlad the Impaler, right? Study translating at Cambridge. <clears throat> now, why would he be called the Impaler, Professor? Yes, yeah, so what do you know of that, Professor? Ah, uh, nothing. But if I had my letter... Uh, just let me get those sh... <clears throat> Professor, please don't leave us now. Uh, do you suppose it can appear in different forms, perhaps? The rat, the wolf, or the bat? Yes, I suppose it could. Hmm. Interesting. Yes. And strange. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Interesting and strange. I just need this thing. How do you suppose he manages to stay alive? I mean, to live for all these centuries. Yes, Professor. Uh, how do you think he manages to stay alive for, for century? For long? Long century Ow! Ah! <laughs> uh, I know! He replenishes his own life with some blood life for the living. The blood life for the living? Well, surely Dr. Van Helsing can't mean there's such things as vampires in this day and age. Ah, uh, he is called an Asferatu. It means the undead, and your mortal weapons are powerless against him. Good lord! <laughs> if this were true, how are we to begin? Even if we find him, how are we to possibly destroy him? Uh, I, uh, uh, I don't know. I have forgotten the letter. Well, maybe, Professor, you should have memorized the damn letter! Memorized? Yeah, in rehearsal. I'm sure what Dr. Sue would be in, in preparation for a little meeting today in rehearsal. As it were, I mean, you're in 19th century London. You may have committed it to memory. <laughs> I have a hook cover, Professor. The letter from your old friend, Professor Zaboni, in Budapest. Oh, six. Yes, thank you, Nina. Darling. <clears throat> ah, yes, uh, he can be destroyed, but only by one method. A wooden stake must be driven through the vampire's heart. A wooden stake? But surely, Dr. Van Helsing can't. Nina, back to bed now, darling. No, but I'm on. You see, now that we have the letter. No, I'm on. No, I'm on. 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 Stake through the heart. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> uh, stake in the heart. From the tower, I wash this all those busts and cart it out. And I knew. I don't know if you want me to walk back there, they really don't know why. <laughs> Of course! The boxes! <sighs> I've heard your voices! <laughs> so I thought... Amina, it's so good to see you up and about. You haven't been out of bed for a week. Jonathan, what was the name of the estate that you transferred over to Count Dragon? Carfax? A Carfax was the name. Carfax? Good God, man! Do you know what you're saying? Is it Carfax the estate? <clears throat> yes. No more than a mile across the heath. Then we've got him. Across the heath, and get in the shadow of the walls and approach the house. Out of 
the cellar. Go. What's that? It's back. Shoot it. Can't use that bathroom for little gun. I did it. The gun didn't fire. Ah, yes, you see. Doctor, the flight is there. Right over here. I can't quite recall how I fell asleep last night. I remember hearing a distant gunshot, or perhaps a distant click. Click. <laughs> Barking of dogs. Barking dogs. Barking dogs. <sighs> I remember a silence. A silence over everything. A silence so profound that I got up and looked out the window. <sighs> Not a thing seemed to be stirring. Not but all to be grim and fixed to silent death. <laughs> I bring you life, eternal life. The blood is the life. The blood is the life. Tea is served. Ah, oh, there's tea. Tea? Yes, you must serve. Yes, the tea. Is the life. Ah, uh, yes. Wrong blank! But I heard the barking dogs. Oh, 
crap. I think he's in some sort of rat. Jonathan! Jonathan! <laughs> Is she alive? Oh, thank God, thank God you're alive. <laughs> My friends, we must just stay. Untouched this vampire's lair. <laughs> Sterilize his remaining earth boxes and drive this monster to bay. We made our way to Jamaica Lane where we found more of the earth boxes filled with earth from the vampire's native Transylvania. There are only 16 boxes here. 33 at combat. Now only 16 here. That makes 48. Nine. 49. Ah, yes, Einstein, 49. Oh, I was lost. Mina is lost. No. Wait, shh. Now here he comes to your places.
we don't have the mountain mistake. I thought you were supposed to have the mountain mistake. There must be a mountain mistake somewhere backstage of the castle. In the big <laughs> castle. Which way of the castle? Uh, the stage and everything. Just do something, Doc. Do something. I'll, I'll hit him with a crowbar. No! You cannot kill me with your crowbar! <laughs> you need bottom! Crow? Oh! oh. Well, the prize is taken in the bottom of the stage, the stage right wing of the castle. I believe she has to convert her to the good side of the force. Ah, uh, yes, here she is. Thank you, sister. May the force be with you. <laughs> now, Asa! Jonathan! Ow! No, no, no! Ow! Do it yourself! Ow! God is merciful. Is he dead? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jonathan, at last, our awful nightmare is over. Ah, yes, Lucy. Mia! <laughs> at last, our awful nightmare is over. Cannon can't self-slaughter. Oh God, 
card. How wary, stale, flat, and unprofitable seem to be all the uses of this world. It is not, nor it cannot come to good, but break my heart, for I must hold my tongue. Here, sweet lord, at your service. How do you think it's going? Not bad. Not so bad at all. Oh, I forgot to tell you, kisses on your opening, old friend. You too, Vernon. Kisses? On my openings? Have you seen Harry? You know, Daisy, you've been, uh, you've been saying that for years, uh, kisses on your opening. And, well, you might want to think about just saying, break a leg or something. Why? Well, I mean, it kisses on your opening. What? I mean, it suggests kisses on your opening. Yes, exactly. <laughs> kisses on your opening night. Are you the ghost now? Uh, nope. Ghost first, uh, Polonius now, ghost again, then the gravedigger, and finally the English ambassador. Quite the workout. Have you seen Mary? No, I haven't seen her. Farewell, my lord. Is it okay up there? Yeah. I think it's okay. Mary, where have you been? Here I am, sitting here trying to prepare. <sighs> Emotional preparation is really the key to acting. Isn't that right, Jack? I don't know anything about acting anymore. I'm a lawyer. Ask me about torts. Valentines will rise, but all the earth will <clears throat> sum them to men's eyes. Uh, Tyler, Valentines will rise. Crap. My necessaries are embarked. Farewell, and sister as the winds give benefit. What, uh, what happened with Tyler? Well, Tyler was a bit... Well, actually, Mary was a bit... No, it all seems kind of okay out there. Yeah, it does seem kind of okay out there. Yes, here, Larry Teach. Aboard, aboard for shame. They really seem to be listening out there. Well, it's not too hot. They won't listen when it's too hot. Or when it's too humid. The temperature humidity index is really the key to audience listening. Well, there's a nice breeze in the barn tours are open. Oh, and mosquitoes. They won't listen if they're waving their programs at mosquitoes. Not too many mosquitoes for some reason. They respond to the temperature humidity index, too. They really do seem to be listening out there. Mosquitoes! I'm so glad this is on your opening year. What do you mean you can't find it? I can't find it. Did you set it on the prop table and check it against your list? I set it on the prop table and checked it against my list. You lost the school of Europe. Oh, God. You lost the skull of Ethel Farnstein? Oh, God, oh, God. Will you tell us? Well, better find it, or it'll be your skull will be using it as a prop. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. I shall obey, my lord. The air fights shrewdly. It is very cold. Thanks a lot, Mary. You made us late. Just because I won't sleep with you, you blame me for messing up our entrance. No, not just because you... No. It is a custom more honored in the breach than in the observance. Got a nice laugh out there, not bad. Amazing. Amazing? Gordon Page, uh, Hamlet. Amazing. Well, I mean, perhaps if you weren't upstaging him at every opportunity. I am not upstaging him. You played the last scene against the back wall. Man. I do not. Gordon Page is Hamlet. And even I have to say that it's going to be okay out there. Maybe better than okay. Yes, it's better than okay. See, the only thing he's trying to do out there is to tell a story. Simply and honestly. That's the only thing they want, you know. Sit in the dark and listen to stories. The best we can ever do is just that. Tell them a good story. And this is a good story. And the other thing they want is a nice <laughs> even, even if I'm upstaging him, he has no damn right to play Hamlet. Look, my lord, speak the speech. It is the grace of madness. I will speak the speech. As I pronounce it to you, I pronounce it to you. Trippingly on the tongue. Nor do not saw the air too much with your hand. Thus, but use all gently. Suit the action 
to the word. The word to the action. With this special observance, with this special observance, that you overstep not the modesty of nature. That you overstep not anything so overdone is from the purpose of play. Have a good one. 
They seem to be listening up there. THI over MFR. What? The temperature humidity index over the mosquito frequency ratio. It's Daisy's theory of audience listening. Well, look, I just want to say that it seems kind of okay out there. Yeah, just kind of okay out there. Thanks. Don't thank me. Okay, I just want to say that you're doing okay. Okay? And I'll be a couple of steps downstage, so you can take the stronger, the more upstage position. I mean, the name of the place, Hamlet, for God's sake. See you out there. See ya. Anat, what is he that built stones in the carpenter? I exit the boat, whilst I consider it. Gordon, the skull's not in the trap. Not in the trap. Why, the grave maker. His howl's last little doomsday. Uh, Daisy, have you seen Ethel? I mean, the skull. Have you seen the skull? The skull is Ethel's? What? No, <coughs> no, who said that? I said FL. It stands for Fermenti Locus. It's Latin, you see. The place of decay. The place of decay, the grave, the skull. Have you seen the skull? You're a bit too clever for me sometimes, Gordon. I found it under the barn. Under the barn? In the trap? That's where Richard put it. That's where it's supposed to be. Ron, put it back in the trap. You can't put it in the trap. The scene started. I'll put it in the coffin. The coffin goes in the trap. You can't put it in the coffin. The scene with the coffin was before the scene with the skull. No, the scene with the skull was before the scene with the coffin. <laughs> no, the scene with the bodies before the scene with the skull, which is before the scene with the coffin. We found Ethel. Where was she? Under the barn. Ethel was under the barn? Ethel? No! No! It's... It's FL. It's Latin and it means fermenti locus. Right, Craig? FL. Right. <laughs> FL! Um, Gordon? Ah! Uh, Tyler! Jack! I didn't care to Ian sneak it on! Karma, oh. you do it! No way! I'll throw it over the flap! No! What about the cantaloupe? No! Wait, what? Gordon, wait! Ah. Who is this man? That he has no sense of business, that he sings at grave digging. A pickaxe and a spade, a spade. Get me a skull from where it has laid. Ethel? No! Ha ha! F L! F L! Latin and all that? Yeah, the skull is Ethel's, isn't it? Yeah. Well, <coughs> she always wanted to be in Hamlet. Is your head up, Pat? Yeah, it's yours. Alas, this Listen. same skull is your skull, the king's jester. What you said about maybe, about maybe falling in love, did you mean it? Maybe, yeah. Yeah, me too, maybe. Tyler, we've got an entrance here, get your butt on stage! Have a good day. Thanks. Everyone ready for the last scene? Oh yes, we all get to die by poison now. Isn't that lovely? Poison leaves so much room for acting. Later, from her fair unpolluted flesh, let violence bloom. Drink that poison, you damn incestuous dame. Go follow thy mother. He is justly served. Forgive me, noble.
band while we all got to get up on stage in front of the audience and sing that stupid song like we just did, closing night of every season. Because everybody has gotten up on stage and everybody has sung that stupid song for 67 years since the theater started. That's no reason. That's the best reason. Well, I think we can use a change. So do I. Both of you weep like babies from the first note. And just because you two middle-aged pranks are embarrassed by a bit of honest emotion is no reason to toss a 67-year-old tradition. You need a drink. So do I. Think of it. Hi, Ray. Is that? I thought I'd be good at the closing night part. Henry. You can't do that, Henry. She's my date. Henry. I haven't had a date for a number of years, and neither, for that matter, has Ethel. Henry! Um, you did very well with pencils this season, Sarah. Efficient. It was an efficient system. Well, efficiency in the service of art is my watchword. Well, um, thank you. I, I appreciate it. Gordon, are you in here? Yeah. Coffee. I, uh, like to come in the barn sometimes and think, and, uh, well, it just feels completely different than the last show was ended. Come on. Let's go to the party. Will you dance with me? Yeah, I don't dance. <laughs> we'll see about that. Gordon out here? Yeah, he's waxing nostalgic with mosquitoes. Uh, I just want to say thank you. No, thank you. You did great work this summer. Thanks. I'm, uh, well, I'm sorry about Charlie's aunt. <laughs> yeah, me too. It was pretty funny. Well, not funny funny, but funny a year from now funny. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to know the really funny funny part? You'll be dining out of stories of Charlie's aunt 30 years from now. People will be asking you about it and at their bars and green rooms from coast to coast. It will be legend. Wait for it. There. Yeah, but uh, where he's going, it won't be legendary. Wall Street <coughs> law firms, river, river, and well, he'll tell people, and they'll laugh, but they won't really understand, and uh, eventually he'll forget why he started telling it in the first place. Yeah, you really have to be on the stage to understand. You must be Charlie's own. Me? No. <laughs> uh, I have to go check in my kit in the dressing room. So, call me a law. When do you start? Well, end of September, I guess. You guess? No, I'm definitely going. It's funny though. My agent called the other day. The Guthrie Theater wants me to be a part of the resident company. I said no. I'm starting school. Right. It'd be fun to try out though. I'd most likely get the part now that I can't do it. <laughs> Probably. You know, I uh, I had a thought. Columbia might defer my enrollment for a year. Do you think I should look into that? Deferring my enrollment? This summer, Charlie's Amber not has been awesome, and it would be amazing to be part of Resident Company again. Do you think there's something from Horatio I can do for my audition? Well, well like, yeah, of course. Well, there's... Gordon, thank you for the advice for the summer. I come back to the party. Yeah, in a minute. You know, if you kept the damn mosquitoes out and put in some air conditioning in here, it wouldn't be so bad up here. Uh, so, what do you think for next season? I haven't given, given it much thought. Oh, uh, well, then how about some Strindberg? Dance of Death, maybe. I've always wanted to play Cap. Or an Ibsen. I've got a killer concept with the Lady from the Sea. Yeah, well, Barbara kind of does a thing about Ibsen, so... Really, Gorda? That's a terrific idea! I bet she would sponsor it. Well... Yeah, I bet she might. I mean, if you were the one to ask her, of course. She's inside at the party right now. Well, make sure she knows it's by Heinrich Gibson, the same author that wrote Pierre Gint, and make sure she knows it was you who directed Charlie's Aunt. I, mean, I think that'll clinch it. Thanks, Gordo. Thanks. So, next season, what do you think? You really want to come back? 
Well, I don't suppose I'll get the Happy Camper Award. <laughs> but this damn barn grows on you. Uh, it's the smell. What? It's the smell that grows on you. Of the grease paint? Of the barn itself. Old wood, slightly musty, maple leaves. Candle smoke, mildew, and bug repellent. Two hundred year old cow. Flop. Dear, <laughs> Ethel always referred to it as flop. Oh, look who's here. Where did you two come from? I think they've been in the props loft. We've been checking our props. <laughs> oh no, not again. Like pure bait. Tyler! Tyler? Gordon! <laughs> we need to ask you something. Yeah? Well, I don't suppose it would be possible. In fact, with the schedule, I'm sure it's not possible, so, you know, I won't even bother. We want to know if we can get married in the barn next summer. Oh, my goodness. How wonderful! A wedding in the barn again? I can't remember the last time we had a wedding in the barn. Do you remember, Sarah? I think I was blacked out. Daisy, yeah. Oh, I remember. It was Gordon and Sarah. That must be why I was blacked out. <laughs> you two are married? I've been working with you the entire summer, and I didn't know you two were married. Well, were married. Not anymore. Divorced. For three years. Three years and four months and nine days. Gordon! What about the barn? Yeah, sure, as long as you do before season opens or when we're out person. That is so cool. You are so cool for an old guy. Really. You can't interfere with the schedule. No, you really can't interfere with the schedule. Shut up, honey. Kiss me. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing, Tyler. <laughs> Only a few weeks ago we saw you morphing into a bat, and now you're morphing into a married man, and that is just like, oh, wow. Totally amazing for those of us who know you. Let's go dance. Oh, yes. Thanks, Richfield. You're too burning. Oh, God. You've been counting. Uh, yeah. What's this? Gin and tonic? You like gin and tonic. What's that? Diet Coke? I like Diet Coke. Really? Really. It's been Diet Coke all summer, in fact. Mostly, anyway. But then why did you... Because why... then I'd have to talk about it. And then we'd have to talk about us, and I couldn't. Are you sorry you brought me back here this summer? <laughs> no. Are you, uh, sorry you came back this summer? No. Can I come back next summer? Yeah. Sure. Jordan. I, Gordon! I think I have some news for you. Bye. I've been toting things up. Closing night party at <laughs> Pegasus in the woodshed, toting things up. And I think I've gotten all the receipts in from the season. Minus, of course, the ones that are wadded up in the back pocket of Henry's jeans, which she'll send me in December to be reimbursed, but I won't because it'll be too late. And I think we are remarkably going to end the season with a small surplus. How much? Well, I've left in a contingency, of course. For those wadded up receipts in my jeans? But minus the contingency, it comes out to $106. Which means we have no cash to start next season. So the sooner you make your call to Mrs. DeMartino... Do, a dear, a female, dear, Oh, crap. We've still got the fjords, Gordon. Give them a little touch up and we'll make them elves. Oh, credit. Gordon, um, Barbara DeMartino just... Yes, she certainly did. What? Barbara just deliberately dumped an entire bowl of crab and artichoke dip on Susanna's head. And why on earth would she do that? I have no idea. Gordon? I have no idea. Hey, do you guys know what's going on at the farmhouse? We have no idea. Did you guys know that Barbara DeMartino knows like martial arts and Susanna's a kickboxer? <laughs> well, who else is left in the room? Um, just like Barbara and her friends are Club and Susanna, but Susanna looks way yucky. Quick, somebody shut the doors. And be quiet. We don't think we've all left. And turn off the light.
all will. I know it. You won't, you know. Vernon. Well, she won't write. Her. <coughs> Everybody just won't write back. You know that. Of course I know that. But it's old Lang Syne night, and I certainly wouldn't say a thing like that. Well, that's just the first job thing. What do you mean? He means that the first time you do this is so intense that the people you work with become your entire world. And it seems impossible that you all won't remain that close forever. You stay close to some, but it's never the same. And you'll learn that. The next time you're at another theater, you try to make plays, and what you really make is another little temporary family, which is what got you into the business in the first place. It's why we sing the song. What does old Lang Syne mean anyway? Well, I always thought that old Mr. Lang had a sign. <laughs> old Mr. Lang had a sign, like old MacDonald had a farm? Yes, exactly, and it was a sign of... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I don't remember what it was a sign of, but it's sweet and sad. We all sing it together. And I love the way Sarah picks the harmony at the end. And it's about old acquaintance and friendship. And not forgetting. Telling stories in a barn on a summer night. 